Hello, students. Uh, I hope that we are having a new stream today about M. English Emerson. One of your people um, has suggested me to go ahead with the new style where I can show you the text as well. Just some of you uh, may tell me when I share the screen of the text. No, is that visible to you? I mean, chapter six, the big man. If it's happening like that, the text can be seen. Let me know that. Okay. So, all right, we are starting with the, you know, our sixth chapter of uh, Mohsen Hamid's text. Uh, that is the moth smoke, and we have already covered a lot about this. Uh, just have a look at the chapter six that begins with the title, The Big Man. And definitely this man, big man is going to be Murad Badshah. So uh, the whole stream of today is on chapter six, and we shall be discussing uh, this chapter of uh, moth smoke. Uh, the character of Murad Badshah will be talked about. Keep in mind that the very first sentence which is visible to you people is about Murad Badshah, MA, rickshaw fleet captain and land pirate at your service. Allow me to begin at the outside and move in. So that is the way how the narrative also changes. The narrator is Murad Badshah himself and he's talking about himself. This is what is happening in this chapter. Uh, but first of all, I, I need to make something clear to you people that this chapter talks about something uh, very beautiful. That means we have always thought a type of question was there in my mind most of the time. I wanted to know what is the special thing. Uh, I mean, in our society, uh, that society of Pakistani people, where very much educated people become criminals and they resort to something which is unacceptable to the society in general. And they also start thinking to perform something which is, you know, bad and ugly, let's say, and they too uh, sometime uh, move forward to take actions, severe actions or the bad actions because of which they may be termed as the people who are not so good for the society. Today, we will be able to find the answer to the question why this happens with most of the young people in Pakistan that they have got the education, they have got everything with them, but all of a sudden they become the criminals. This chapter throws a lot of light on that. And this is one of the weaknesses of our society. And that weakness is going to be highlighted here in this chapter. So uh, I am advising all my students to look at chapter six. I'm uh, displaying it on the screen as well so that you people can have a good view of the chapter and can see the passage uh, which I shall be talking about first of all. Uh, as I said already that the uh, chapter is six in the big man's title Murad Batya, Amerikshah fleet captain etc. So I'm taking you to the uh, passage that I need you people to concentrate on. It's going to be the second page of the same chapter then it is going to be the third one. Look at the third page we have, you know, uh, here, a lot of things on this page. Some are colored in a different green color and still some are in a very different green color. So if we read that, all of you people, uh, and, and let me make a surety as well if it is visible to you. Somebody may comment that if it is visible uh, to you people, the page is visible, uh, do a comment hurriedly so that I can proceed further. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So uh, look at the page, it says, my father was a gold jeweler, the son of sons of gold jewelers, from time immemorial, he died before I was born in a freakish accident involving a cigarette and the open valve of a balloon vendor, gas cylinder. My mother was of a more modest background and unloved by the members of her husband's family, who at the time of my father's immolation had no knowledge of my Imminent arrival, we were soon living with her brother, my uncle, who worked for the British Council Library. 
So it was that I had access to all the books I could want and the opportunity to learn the nuances of English speech from people who, if nothing else, do not do one thing excellently, speak English. Now, this paragraph, which is being displayed before you, reflects three to four things. First of all, that Murad Badshah was not a poor man. He was the son of a very rich jeweler. And again, he had a lot of connection with the people also. And, and after that, he was able to have the connection with the books as well. It, it, it means that we cannot say that the people who are in touch with the books or the people who are having good money, they will not be turned into something like criminals. It is the circumstance which is actually important. For example, the very traditional start is made in this page where we find that, first of all, some accident took place and because of which the father died and the mom was alive only and this mom was not welcome in the society so this mom and her and baby in the valley they, they had to be transferred back to their original home and from here the whole story begins so this is very traditional one that a mother is not liked by the people at uh, her in-laws and she is disliked by the people as well and and so uh, her baby will also not be liked and especially when the husband is dead at that time she has to go back now, three, four things combined together to formulate the character of Murad Badshah. For example, he, he's the person, when he's born, the father is missing. When he's born, the mother is not in her home, but in the home of her uncle. And thirdly, her in-laws family very quickly are discarding him. And as a result, uh, she and her baby have to live alone. So that's the kind of situation in which Murad Badshah grows up. So that's the beginning, traditional beginning why these people like that converted to criminals they have the similar type of stories so mohsen hamid had reverted to the similar circumstance in order to describe and analyze the behavior of the society let us go down into the passage which is lesser in green color and uh, if you read that it says i received my ma in english 20 some years later and was of course unable to find a job to sum up what followed i went to see my father eldest brother whom i had never met and in a five minutes interview was given a sum of money in exchange of a promise never to show my face in his shop again that i used to purchase a rickshaw in short years since then i acquired four more and now captain of a squadron of five little beauties very excellent to term the rickshaws as the little beauties that's very nice so class as you are having a view of this page this paragraph it's very excellent to find out how did Murad Badshah have a start of his life? He went back in order to get his share after doing his MA English. By the way, Murad Badshah is also MA English. Be careful all MA English. Such things can happen when the society is not going in the right direction. That Murad Badshah went to one of our uncles and he demanded his share. And he was given the share, but with the idea that he will never turn back so he is totally discarded from his father's family so he has to live with his mother's family this is the next factor which makes him a different person as compared to the normal people who are born to the normal parents and they have the normal life and here is a life which is not in that way normal but the struggle of Murad Badshah is really very significant that instead of thinking that he should be the big man he should be the person uh, in order to show the people that he will not drive the rickshaw or he will become the police inspector immediately he starts the job and that job is driving up the rickshaw he loves his job and that is why he gives the title of five beauties instead of saying five rickshaws so so far there's nothing wrong in murad Badshah. all the things are happening with him are wrong actually let us again go down the train and try to find out what happens further with him because of which he becomes such type of criminal person and he involves our uh, our hero that is Shizad, Dara Shizad, Dara Shiku Shizad, that he too becomes like him. Let's see by going down into the page and I'm showing you the text once again. Uh, if we go down, I can see that we will find some more paragraph, which is, you know, again, green in color. And uh, here is something. Uh, let's read this passage. All of you can accompany me in reading. With the arrival of a yellow cabs in Lahore, the rickshaw business took a bad turn. Profits became increasingly slim, and to say competition was fierce is an understatement of unusual proportion. Business is tough business, as they say, and I am fairly handy when it comes to mixing it up. In my post MA years, I have been shot in three times, hit twice, stomach and thigh, and was unfortunately once obliged to kill a man with a wrench. I took to carrying a gun quite some time ago, and it was but a short step from 
protecting my own on the high seas of Lahore streets, realizing that piracy was the wave of the future. The marauding yellow caps had devastated the rickshaw industry. So I conducted a little redistribution of wealth on my own, robbing yellow cab drivers as they slept, put my finances back in black. So this is the passage which will throw a light, a lot of light rather on showing to us what is actually happening with the life of Murad Badshah. For example, when you read this passage, you find that fights keep on taking place between the rickshaw people and the yellow cap people. By the way, yellow cap reminds us the time when Nawaz Sharif was the prime minister of this country and he introduced the scheme of yellow caps and so modern way of traveling, comfortable way of traveling was introduced, but it was directly in clash with the traditional modes of traveling. So that is why each party the wagons party, the cars party, and the rickshaw party, they wanted to preserve their interest and didn't want that their uh, livelihood may be threatened. So that is why each the group was active. And as a result, they were struggling in order to survive together and ultimately the fights took place. So this is the way how businesses are run in our country. I mean to say that the businesses do not try to compete with each other in the sense of quality or in the sense of comfort or in the sense of obliging to the customers. But the businesses run, you know, in such a way that that the things go wrong and are, are not discussed on the table and rather they are resorting to some kind of fights and quarrels and the same fight murad Bats has telling that he had to kill someone as well he became the murderer also and he started to rob the yellow caps in order to uh, compensate the losses which he was going through so this is the way how we turn and take judgment take uh, administration and take all control or try to or attempt to take the controls in our hands but this should not have happened at all with him but this opens the door the very door with, with which murad batsha ultimately entered into this kind of uh, struggle which involved violence as well so the shift of murad batsha was not only based on his insecurity but also on his sense of very much fearfulness about his livelihood and as a result he is doing all these things like that so therefore now you can see how the circumstances were responsible in converting murad Batsha into that but the basic thing is that why justice since law was not present where was justice where was law at that time when these fights were going on so it means that the, this, if the decisions are to be made on the street by the people, such things will happen. Many young will be turning into the criminal and many people will definitely be uh, turning into the bad people as well. So that is the understanding that in Pakistan, the people would like to settle down their issues, uh, not by resorting to table talk, not by resorting to law, but they will be doing that. My students should be uh, here trying to raise the question as well, thinking about the question, is it the circumstance which is responsible, which have converted Murad Batsha and Dara Shakur Shizad in such a type of role, in such a type of character, or they themselves are inhabiting some kind of illness in the brains and minds. This is what at the end of the chapter they should be answering. That is what we need to read and go through for that. So this was the passage about the conversion of uh, Murad Batsha into something by that. Let me take you to the next uh, uh, passage and uh, let me show you that as well. Here it goes. Uh, well, uh, going down the page, I think you, your screen will be moving to the page as well. And you people can go down, still down, still down, and we shall find ultimately one passage which is of very good use for us people. Uh, but keep in mind that you are reading the character of Murad Padshah, the turning of events has taken place and uh, these things are happening in the life of Murad Padshah. Uh, here is a passage where, uh, rather I should say it's a long page. Uh, we can have a start of this page from here. If you are able to locate the page, you people uh, may, may try to reach that page as well. Uh, I hope it's going to be 81 page according to my book. Uh, here on 81 page, we have uh, the type of description of a robbery uh, which Murad Badshah and Darash Kushizad are going to take place. They are going to have this robbery in order to loot and plunder the boutique. And, and very amazingly, you will be uh, surprised to see that they plan to uh, rob a boutique because boutique is a place which they think that uh, the rich people belong to that or it belongs to the rich people. They, they have the kind of money, bring the money, a lot of money there, and the costly clothes are available. They buy the costly clothes, and possibly in this way, 
the store or the boutique may be very rich in money as well and in clientele as well. So I'm reading this passage for you, which is visible on your screen. Let us read it. I wore red, the darkest crimson, a color that blends into black in the dark and flatters my figure by day. My kurta fluttered behind me in the breeze and concealed revolver itched where it pressed against my hairy belly. Darashiku was inside for all the world, a tastefully dressed patron of the shop, but he carried death in his undershorts and hunger in his heart. I had done all this before, but the thrill, the excitement, the electricity of anticipation never goes. Yes, armed robbery is like public speaking. Both offer a brief period in the limelight, the risk of public humiliation, the opportunity for crowd control, and in both, what you wear is an often ignored but vitally important factor. Dear student, this is the passage, very important indeed. Uh, but first of all, let us say, what is the situation? The situation is that uh, Murad and Dara, and Dara are at, at, at the boutique and uh, the robbery is going to take place just now. And uh, the situation is at this moment that when Dara is inside, he's wearing a very good cloth, but he's keeping the gun. And the sentence in the third line of the passage is very important for this purpose. Uh, it's not the third line, it's going to be the fifth, sixth line where it is said that he had gun, he had death in his undershorts and hunger in his heart. So that is the strange combination of the heart, of the hunger in the heart and of the death in the undershort. It means that one of the things that makes us, you know, convert ourselves into such, such a criminality is the hunger. It means that society and the responsibles of the society are not maintaining such a society where nobody goes hungry. And if someone goes hungry, definitely at that time, the problem is there that this hunger will prompt the people to pull the guns on the people who have sufficient money in their control, sufficient food in their control. And moreover, the second thing, which is the writer providing us the clue why most of the people would like to turn into such a situation is the thrill of controlling the people, is the thrill of becoming into limelight, is the thrill by making the people humiliate and humiliated before them, is the thrill by getting the control of the situation. So these two things become responsible in converting such normal, common, educated people, highly qualified people to turn into robbery. But whatever the case may be, uh, this robbery thing is definitely against the society and this againstness of the society has been germinated in the society if justice prevailed, if social services prevailed, if everyone is getting a right. I don't say that a utopia should be established, but then a justice system should prevail, meritoriousness may be recognized, these things won't happen. But uh, the writer Mohsen Hamid is pointing out such a thing because of which it has become a big problem for all of the society that the people are converting themselves into such a bad situation which has made it a problem for us. Now you see, uh, students, what, we, what you have read is something very you know, dangerous as well for you people because in a way when we are reading this text possibly some of your young minds may be thinking of converting yourself into such kind of liquids, but believe me, it is just the book, it is just literature, it is just making a beautiful statement that one may not be doing these things because they, have, they carry their results and consequences as well. And so that is why do not take anything negative from it. This is not the process to convert you into decorates and robbers. It is the way to save you that if such a thing happens, you may be choosing something right, something good because of which you may not fall into trouble, rather you may become a most useful member of the society and especially struggle for such things which may let the justice prevail then these things will not happen into the life of anyone. Let me take you to the next passage that I want to teach you. So that is why it comes down, down there. Again, going down the page, you will find uh, two passages on page 82, which are very important for us here. Uh, it, for example, says the signal was given and I walked in. If you learn nothing else about violent conflict, learn this. Never rush. Take your time. Evaluate the situation. Then act. When you have multiple tasks to perform, proceed sequential or you will make a mess of them all. Think of it as being assigned to write, read a long convoluted poem. If that helps you make tasks at this stage, where to enter? Control the crowd, rob them and leave. What a beautiful piece of writing uh, type of advice is being given that if you want a difficult task of like that, you may be, you know, doing things in an arranged manner, in a very slow, calculated manner. What an advice is coming from Mohsen Hamid. But then it's an irony. 
it is irony and satire on the society. Why the society is converting the young people like that? Why it is making them the enemies of the society? That is why it should be taken as a satirical comment on Pakistan society rather than taking it an advice for the shoplifters. The second passage, which is here on the same page, it goes to say, uh, the shop guard is rather sweet fellow with a shotgun and leather bandolier of cartridges seemed almost ready to cry by the time i entered walking purposefully but without undue haste from my long years in the surface profession i have learned both that the customer is always right and that if he steps far in airport line threatening him with execution style murder is valid although rarely sizable option I am told my smile and manner succeed in conveying his duality of knowledge and so it is easy for me to maintain the utmost respect while inspiring terror of a bowel moving proportion. That's again the rule of the people who are you know, involved in such violent business that they would like to spread terror more as compared to the death. So, so some of the things they do just to establish terror for the others and so that the other people may not refuse to follow their command. That is why uh, this person, Murad Patshah, is thinking of killing the guard and of entering into the successful robbery. Keeping on with the text more in order to have a view what further happened, the moments which were very bad moments, these things continue to happen in, in that robbery as well. And in that way, we have a total close end of the chapter as well. But the few things that I need to talk to my students is that what we have read today, it's very significant because it goes to talk about the social problem as the text is going to be about socioeconomic problems or we can say socio-political problems as well. The passage goes to address not only the law makers, but also it addresses the law enforcers. It also goes to talk about the people who are called themselves intelligentsia or the people who are responsible for the training and education of the people. Then it goes to talk about the high ups, the, the corridors of power which matter in establishing justice and telling and crying at their ears, look at this passage and it tells you why people are converting themselves into robbers, even if they are educated, even when they have good quality education. The answer is here that justice does not prevail. So Hamid has touched the very, uh, very core of the society, very critical moment of the society, which needs to cure itself in order to become as good as possible. So students, that was the lesson of the day. You people have not uploaded on this WhatsApp. You have not uploaded the previous question that I'm expecting the answers to or the commentaries on these lectures that you have attended in Matsumo. Uh, on WhatsApp, you can share with me. I may be checking that and seeing the evaluation, what I'm teaching as well. So uh, before we go, I can take up only one or two questions so anybody can raise the question here. Uh, one question has been raised for by Gulshir, which says, uh, who is responsible for these circumstances? And so that was the debate we started with. Yes, of course, uh, we need to take, first of all, in the Aristotelian sense, when a man turns into a bad man, who is responsible for that? According to Aristotle, the responsibility lies on the shoulder of circumstance, not on the man. It is the circumstance, the plot, which makes it so. It is not the man. Man may be responsible up to some extent, but circumstances make it worse. So in case of Dara Shiku, in case of uh, Murad Badshah, it is the circumstance, and therefore it's the society which has turned them into so. And the second question again comes from Sami Rana. Uh, by the way, I am going to join. Uh, is degree of masters of no use for common men very funny indeed it is very useful actually uh, even if you have a phd degree even if you have a holy quran understanding degree or if you have any other degree from foreign countries if your stomach is empty if your society is not ready to provide for you if your society is not ready to take your services and if you are rejected at most of the places by your in-laws by your people by your loving ones this is going to be the result definitely somewhere a brute is present in us which we control with the help of education and that group may waken up at that very moment when justice is not given to them some of the minds are uh, very good minds and they may not uh, they may take all responsibility on them and they will not be turning into brutes but some minds are there they, they possibly take less influence of these things and become active in this regard so that is why again and again i'm saying that this is the justice system that should be prevailing in the society. I'm not talking about the judges, by the way. I'm talking about the overall justice that should be dealt with the people, that if somebody is working hard, hard, his merit may not be injured, 
and that person may be given good quality and it, if it is happening in the society that is why Mohsen Hamid is trying to say such a thing uh, why has why his share was not given to him and you know this is a question that you it's a very naive question very innocent question it happens most of the time when a woman is left with the man without the man and possibly man is dead at that time mostly we are again doing no justice with her by not providing to her by not giving her any support at all and that the same thing happened with that and the evil thing began with that very idea with that very place can we say education of Pakistan cannot civilize men or women? We'll share again. It's a very dangerous question. We'll share. Let's not criticize the education system. Let us in general talk about the society. That society has to make certain arrangements with the help of which the workforce, the young people are involved into some activities, positive activities, so that every individual is coming out of education system must feel that he will be given an opportunity in order to show his worth and earn money. I'm not saying that everybody may be given a job by the government or by the state. I'm saying that the situation should be created in the same way as the situation is present in the Western and advanced societies of the world. They have a plan most of the time. They know that how many people will be coming up as graduates and how many opportunities then definitely should be present in the society. Our current government is possibly doing something good. But still, that good has to come forward for the young people. Providing loans, providing money is not sufficient. The sufficient thing is that, that the opportunities should be there. Every young man should be involved. Then the opportunities of such things do not happen. OK, uh, that's all from me uh, today. Students, I hope you have enjoyed it. Do not fail to give your comments on YouTube or on Facebook as well. Uh, but I more offer, uh, expect from you people that the answers will be coming up from you on on whatsapp as i advise to write notes on and here for this lecture the note should be on murad badshah why is he uh, converting into something like that okay uh, uh, you have answered sufficiently many things talks up with comments here on this live lecture but i want you people to send me your write-ups about the past three lectures and this one as well you can make the groups as well you can divide your comments uh, into different groups, four groups, four lectures we have done, and give your response on WhatsApp uh, in, in in the word format, possibly, so that I can display if we want. So we will have one live lecture about the writing of you people. So the writing should be brief, responsive, and quoted with uh, or studied with the text which we are which we are reading. So go ahead with that, and thank you very much for watching the whole stream. Now I shall be stopping here. Uh, so bye bye for the next lecture.